two, three. Hello. Another episode. We're knocking it out. We're getting it done. We got a good solid schedule now. Yes, we finally have a schedule so that we actually don't like skip it. We're sticking to it. Tired, exhausted, a little worn out for the, what, the week already or not. We will get this episode done. So, okay. Also, we're working on the sound. We have these new mics. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see, like, you might not be able to see, but we have these new little mics and they're tiny, but they pick up so much sound. Really? They so, really do. We're really working on not screaming into the microphone. I'm getting which, super excited. So I've, yes. I've lowered mine so that yes. I'm not like. So, like, normally screaming. you would like pin it like right here, but we have it like all the way down so that we <laughs> can try not to scream. Well, we so. can't adjust the volume. So, yeah. So, until we get better mics and all that stuff, we will be. Working with what we got, but for now I think the sound sounds pretty good. But anyways, apologize if you guys if they were squealing last week. You were very excited. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, how was your week, Glenn? It was good. There wasn't real, there wasn't I don't think there was like a whole lot that occurred. Um, something happened this weekend. I feel like oh well. I mean, if you guys haven't been paying attention to sports land, uh, Colorado. Um, oh yeah. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and the Sanders sons. Get it. Sanderson, Sanderson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have been dominating college football. Um, so it's been super fun watching that. And then as a Cowboys fan, it's awesome to see Dion doing well. And then the Cowboys is doing well. And then UT is undefeated. So it's been a solid. The only person that's not undefeated is me. I am 0-2 in my fantasy. Oh. But. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, but the real life teams are doing well. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. I think it's just been fun. Like, and your players have actually just been doing well. Too, though yeah like you have micah parsons right yeah i had micah parsons um who plays for the dallas cowboys if you don't know i have keenan allen who plays for the chargers um i have josh allen who uh is the quarterback for the bills so i have some pretty good like i have players. a solid team but i think there's just holes in like my um no i can't have my wait shh, back up <laughs> can't have micah parsons because micah parsons plays on defense I have Tony Pollard, who's the running back. My okay. Parsons is the defense. I don't have the I point. obviously don't play fantasy. Yeah, because I, was I like, definitely said the wrong let me thing. <laughs> take that back. I wish that you could pick a defensive player on your fantasy. That would be so fun to like rack up points from like I mean you still get the points from sacks, from picks, from return like returns, but it would just be nice to kind of like see, really get to see those like stats. But there just aren't that many like killer defensive players that would really make it matter okay um, well regardless tony pollard's doing pretty good still so. yeah but tony yes tony pollard is doing really really good um uh, but anyways it's just been fun like um the girls are really enjoying it and i had a girl visit from our new york office she came in today and she like knew exactly who i was because i was the person that like put together the fantasy like teams for the office and so it's just been yeah. like that's like the fun part i think is putting that together so what about you? Well, that's fun. Um, yeah, mostly, let's see, we had a game this week, Phoenix. Uh, they lost, but they played well. Um, it's really just a matter of, like, them working as a team, and I feel like their coach is not coaching them the way that I would like them to, him to coach them as far as, like, understanding the dynamics of the game. Um, right. So that's a little bit frustrating, which I've told you a million times about this. Yeah. <clears throat> just watching them and, like, them just – I mean, they're seven, so, like, I mean, what level of understanding of the game can I require of them? But I have a high standard for him, so. Right. I think he's a super <clears> athletic, <throat> so. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once he understands the actual game itself at a high level, then he'll be even more, more out there. But, like, what happens a lot is that, like, and you, I told you this already, but, like, for those of you guys who haven't heard the story yet, what happens a lot is, like, Phoenix plays defense. Because he's like Pollard and like a lot of the kids on his team, so and he plays defense really well. He has the ability to get the ball. He also has really good ball handling skills and everything. So not only does he get the ball, but he can dribble the ball. He can well, keep the ball after he, he can gets keep it. the ball. Yeah. So and he's super fast. So he'll like dribble it way up the field. He'll get it passed off, and then whoever he passes it off to loses the ball. And it's not because it's a bad pass. It's because these kids don't know how to receive a ball. They don't know how to receive it. They don't know how to go to it. So it's, like, really frustrating for him to, like, literally run back and forth. Because then now, now he has to drop back because he's on defense. And so, like, he's just getting super tired and, like, worn out from, like, playing like that. And he plays a lot. Like, he plays game from beginning to end, which, again, 
is, a, is great because he has some friends on the team who do not get that many minutes, whose parents have like raised hell because their kids aren't playing or whatever the amount of time that they want. So I'm thankful, but still like, I'm okay. I'm like, yeah, of course he's going to play. He's good. You can't do it without him. Right. So now what? You know? So it is what it is. We're just taking it a game at a time. Hopefully they start winning just because I feel like, yeah, they're starting to get, they're starting to get a little, a little bit sad. discouraged. Yeah. Yeah. So, and maybe, and also maybe them losing because this whole time they've been saying like, Danny's been saying, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. And we're like, okay, cool, 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 cool. We'll trust the process. Getting murdered in every freaking tournament the whole entire summer long. And now it's like, okay, cool. We trust the process. Now we're into the fall officially. The fall fall starts tomorrow when we're recording this, the 21st. Woo, yay. Um, sweater weather. Sweater weather, yes. Um, <laughs> Now it's getting into the fall, and it's like, okay, they've had two games. They've lost both. So what are we – we're supposed to trust the process? Right. Like, if I was training a client, and, like, I've, it's been two weeks, I haven't lost weight, and they're like, cool, 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 give me 90 days. 90 days comes around, and they're like, still haven't lost weight. I'd be like, okay, well, what one, what have you been doing? We've been doing what you've told us. Like, we have – Phoenix for especially for Phoenix, we have hired um, an extra private coach to coach him. He's – Picked up a second league. He goes to every practice, every game, never misses. Right. Like, I don't, anyways, I get off on a whole tangent about that. But if you're a sports mom or a sports parent, then you know exactly how I'm feeling. I'm just, like, not feeling him as a coach. I'm not feeling like he's helping Phoenix develop. I'm not feeling like he even knows what he's supposed to be doing. He doesn't teach the kid discipline at all. It's just, I think that's, like, the hard part for me is you and I are both, like, very focused on, like, the discipline and respect in, our, in general. I feel like that's like a key thing. Like even with Landon and he's five, but like even when other like professional athletes or college collegiate level athletes coach kids, it's different than when it's somebody that's like loves soccer yeah. and like is super into it and like, you know, maybe played in high school and was like pretty good or whatever. Like there's a certain level of focus that I like I told Landon he has to have when he's practicing because that's like the expectation that we were given when we were in school. But yeah. also you and I didn't do like tiny kid sports. We, we started doing sports when we were like middle school and high school. Yeah. But if, so, but if you think about like gymnasts, right? Right. They start three, four. They're in the Olympics at 16. Right. Right. So, so at seven, <laughs> they had a level of discipline that I think they could, our kids could have. I'm not saying it needs to be militant. But it needs to be like, like when I'm talking, it needs to be sitting. Yeah. Like they should be in practice or quiet, paying attention, focused on the drills, actually active and like participating in these drills and like learning things, which honestly I think Landon is doing, but it's not really because his coaches are. It's like today was the first time his attention. coach actually was like, I think, I think honestly the coach or she's got two coaches. The lady coach loves Landon. She just thinks he is just adorable. Yeah. Um, so she like he he's always like talking to her and like whatever and like he's like the best communicator today. Oh, Quinn, I wish I would have gotten this video. You should have <laughs> seen Landon. So they're working on passes today. This is the last. I promise, you guys, this is the last life story we will tell. Yeah. Okay. So he was she uh they she had them like like doing practicing passes. So each person got to pass. Okay. So Landon set up to pass, and he's like conducting the. He's like. I don't remember. I'm making up this child's name. I don't know the child's name. Ezekiel, move over more that way. And he's like, he was like, he was like, this way? And he was like, yeah, you move over more that way. And then he's like, spread out, spread out. Sansa, can you stop? Hey, quit it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell a story, Sansa. Are we going to have to do this? Do we have to do this now? Is this a hooky one or a clippy one? It's a hooky one, I think. put this back on you later since you just have to be making all the sound okay gracious here come here Sansa come here okay you're gonna That's sit fine. there okay cool um anyway so yeah Landon's like spread out and like she's like he's like spread out spread out and then he's like um he's like Ezekiel this is not the job's name <laughs> That's the only name that's going to my reason it's like Ezekiel move over move over and this kid is like this tall he was like over here and he was like, is this far enough? And Landon's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and he's like Ezekiel. He he like he like calls his name and then kicks the ball to him wow. or whatever. And I was like, and his coach, she's just sitting, sitting over there, just cracking up at Landon, like conducting this orchestra, like spread out, spread. I was just like, oh, he's so he learned that from Phoenix. He's so cute. He's like, because he's watched him play so much. Like I feel like Landon's gonna have an advantage because. Phoenix is just passing along like his knowledge yeah. to him, you know? It's like having an I mean, he has an older cousin, but like it's like having an older brother because he just is like when they play together, like or when Landing watches him, he gets to see him like doing that exact thing, you yeah. know? So okay. Anyway, um we got a we got a couple solid things to talk about, so we should get to them. Yes, we gotta we gotta get going. So you're I feel like you're bleeding most of this, so go ahead. Okay. So I have to set my face with my glasses onto my phone because it doesn't unlock with my glasses. Oh. Um, yeah, it's super weird. It unlocks with my sunglasses on, but not with my You're not with your eye glasses? glasses. Yeah, so weird. Okay. Um, That's weird. There's a lot of people that wear glasses. You shouldn't have to, like, lower them to, like, unlock your phone. Yeah, I back. learned that it's, it's my glasses. <clears throat> I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was, like, the light on my phone, whatever. It's my glasses. So weird. I have to just, I'm just being lazy and not resetting it. Okay. So, you know what's so funny? If you guys watched the podcast like a few years ago, uh, the videos like go back to 2020, I wore glasses the whole time, didn't I? Yeah. Well, you started not wearing them because like your glasses dim. Mine don't have the light dimming. Yeah. Okay. Cause I was going to say, I'm sure there's like people are going to be confused because I swear there's a couple of podcast videos where I wore my glasses. Yeah. There were. So now we've switched. It, but Amber's are like, she literally only wears them so she can work on the computer and like okay, not hurt so her yes, eyes. Okay, so yes, because I've been starting to work on the computer in an office, like my eyes have started to get like weaker. And they say that like because of a lot, all the remote work and stuff, basically since COVID, people spend so much time on screens and phones and TVs and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, people using tiny fonts. Yes, tiny fonts. I know you have like giant fonts and all of your stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that is why, and I look at spreadsheets and stuff all day. So the tiny font has just made my eyes like tired. So I still have technically 2020 vision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my thing is that the very, I can normally read the very last line, like really clear. And it's basically kind of like if somebody like stamps something and like the ink smears, things aren't like sh as crisp. sharp and crisp as they used to be. Um, and also these are like, ha, really it's a rough life. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely read street signs in the dark. So <laughs> that's another thing too. These are glare. So that's another thing too, like, um, reflecting like it, at night, like the street lights and, um, headlights really, really make it hard for me to see. So these have that blue light blocker and, um, they help things be just like sharp enough. So I don't have to squint at like small fonts, which it sounds kind of like, I'm like, <laughs> like sight privilege. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just sight privilege. Yeah. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm like, you like, like wow, like, Amber, you can't read the bottom <laughs> line. Yeah. Of the like, oh my gosh. It's like, ugh. that's the name of our <laughs> sight privilege. privilege. Hopefully, people don't take that offensively. Like, if you are actually a person who suffers from blindness, no offense. I'm literally not. I'm saying she's a brat because she would have had glasses <laughs> and she can see. Better than me with my glasses. <laughs> it's just unfair. It's but also, life. my glasses are very cute. No, they're they are really cute. They I, are really really cute. I love them. Yeah. So I am glad that my eyes suck just enough. So you so can, wear, I can be like, I feel like I remember when we were little. You would be want to wear glasses so bad. I did. And mom was like, I can't buy you glasses. You don't need them. They won't pay for them. My age has <laughs> finally made me need. <laughs> Yeah, I've aged into needing glasses. This is, this is 30s, people. Yeah, 30s. Finally, we barely need glasses. Yes. Okay, now we're okay. really going to carry on uh, to the main topic here. Yes. Okay, I'm going to play this uh, video, and then we'll chat about it. And then I've got one more for us to like hit. Really, this was like a, this is like a quick little... An appetizer. Yeah. Okay. High school student in Texas suspended from school because of his hairstyle. Here's what the 17-year-old's hair looks like. Okay, so the school claims that Daryl George's hair violates the district's dress code by falling below his eyebrows and earlobes. His mother says he wears it twisted in dreadlocks tied at the top of his head and says he's being discriminated against. The school says 
he was not disciplined because of race, but his family is thinking of suing. Darrell was suspended the same week Texas passed a law outlawing racial discrimination based on hairstyles. And the district defends its dress code, which says policies are meant to teach grooming and hygiene, instill discipline, prevent disruption, avoid safety hazards, and teach respect. High school students. Wait, back up. They said that the policy is that he can't, his hair can't be past his ears, can't be past his earlobes or his eyebrows as a boy. So they have two separate dress codes for girls and boys okay so no basically boys can't have long hair sounds like what the rule is yeah well i struggle with this <laughs> because if you go to a school that that's the rule that you can't have long hair his hair is long the way that it was twisted up it's yeah. got to be like it's super long but that's, he has his shoulders he twisted he twists it up because of the dress code but I, okay. But so, that doesn't matter. If I would like to know if there's any white kids in his class, boys, who wear man buns and if they're allowed to get away with that. Because technically, your hair, if you can put it in a bun, is not, is past your, your what is it? Your eyebrows. Right. I feel like if it's a, so this is the thing. In the military, police academy, fire academy, anything military schools anything that requires a certain level of like polish yes long hair is not considered polished no it's not so it's not because he has if he had short twists on the top of his head they wouldn't be violent or dress code if his hair was a little in a fro just like the guy that we were just looking at like if it was like in a little fro still not past his ear like the benefit of being a African-American boy is your hair can still be long and not be past your earlobes because it grows up, not down. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, true. So, yeah. like, you could have a fro and it's like, well, it's not, unless he straightens it, you know what I mean? So, I think his dress, like, his dress look cute, but I think as parents, did y'all not read, read the, the dress, dress code, code before you put your child, because he probably goes to a private school. Yeah. This is not a public school in Texas. He probably goes to a private school. Yeah. And... Everybody has to buy, it didn't say anything about dreads. It didn't say anything about braids. It wasn't specific. It just said length for boys. Now, I couldn't imagine what the dress code is, the dress code for women, for girls is. I'm hoping that if, it's, if they're that meticulous about hairstyle, then they are. The girls probably have rules like no unnatural colors. Yeah. It can't be past your bra strap. Like they don't want hair. If they say hair it's about your butt, you can't have hair where you could sit on it, right? Yeah. Which could be an issue, right? Because a lot of, like, the style right now for braids, like, obviously we have braids, right? The style right now for braids is long, long. Like, literally past your butt cheeks. Yeah, but that's too long. But I'm saying, like, if a girl showed up to school like that, and they were like, they were, they're going to say you're discriminating? No, I, we said your hair can't be past this point, synthetic right. or not. So you broke the rules. That has nothing to do with the style right. itself. And I think that's what it is here, is that just because you pull it back does not mean it's not too long. The whole point is like, apparently, in my opinion, I think they're going for that man military look, like a fade or like yeah. very short and trimmed and polished. And like, I bet they have rules about them having to shave and like making sure that they look, you know what I'm saying? Like, I bet they have rules like, now it sounds really freaking strict. But you can't say, I didn't know when I tied my kid up. Did you not read the dress code policy? Yeah. Like, I just think that his parents were like, we're going to get this that your hair done. And if anybody says anything, we're going to say that it's discrimination because we're black. Like, you, that's obviously breaking the dress code. I, I don't. What do the comments say? Are there comments? Yeah, there's comments. <clears throat> so. People say. Um, doesn't hair, this first one says, doesn't hair grow lower than earlobes? Anyway, the back of my neck is lower than my earlobes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the school district I'm in in Texas has one dress code so the guys can have long, can have hair as long as they want. So they have one singular dress code for the all, all like whatever gender. The gender neutral dress code. Dress code. Yeah. Um, this one, let's see. Find one that has like a ton of comments on it okay this one says uh this one has 60 replies it says teach hygiene in quotes if that isn't one of the 
cleanest, neatest, and freshest hairstyles in the in the hick ass school. I'll eat a shoe. I mean, okay, it's hygiene was just one of the bullet points they said. Yeah. Um, this person, of course, this comment's gonna be here. It's the outdated thinking that black people's hair is unkept and unhygienic. Their racism is definitely showing. I just don't think that's what <clears throat> they what they were saying. Uh, this person responded and said, have you ever seen the dreadlock cleaning videos? The water turns darker than dirty slop mop water. It's nasty. Yeah. I mean, his looked freshly done, but, um, let's see. And that's for also multiple, like white people get dreads too, and they can be just as disgusting. Like as any other race that has dreadlocks. They just hold dirt. Like, it is what it is. You have to clean them. Like, you have to be really on top of it, on top of your grooming if you're going to have a hairstyle like that. But that's not, I think the most of the issue was the length. Like, I feel like just because it's styled up doesn't mean that it's abiding by the dress code. Like, if, a, if again, like if a white kid or an Asian kid or whatever boy had his hair French braided, Cause that's kind of similar to what he has. It's like a, it's like it's like French braided. Yeah, he's got he's got his dreads like, like I actually braided my braids today, yeah. um, into like a like one big like French braid. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I think obviously people are going to assume that it's discriminatory discriminatory because it's, because it's a black kid and our hair our hairstyles just as a culture we we're constantly changing our hair we're adding to our hair, um. We don't have, well, we, we can, but like it wouldn't be considered hygienic or styled for if, for, if we were to just like take, get out of the shower, walk to like get out of the shower, throw our hair up and go to school. Like, right. You know, just culturally, that just wouldn't be acceptable. Like, we have a higher, and I think as black in our culture, generally, at least American, black American culture, we have a, we're highly concerned about like hygiene and like, Men, like black men are very concerned about like their hair looking neat and polished and all that um so i think it's it's interesting but i think his hair does look neat and polished i mean we went to school with a lot of a lot of girls that like didn't wash their hair for freaking two weeks yeah and it wasn't the black girls and if they didn't wash it for two weeks because we're not supposed to wash our hair for more than they either have braids or you're not supposed to wash your hair you're only supposed to wash your hair once a week yeah like you know things like that like it's a different level of like hair care that's like i really think them. that people just focused on the what they said about hygiene because i don't think it's a hygiene thing i think it was a length thing yeah i really think that's what it is i don't think that it was like oh like you, your hair looks like it's dirty or it smells. I think it was like a, hey, we said that your hair can't be long. It's obviously longer. Even though you have it pulled back, it still is past the length that we say that is appropriate for boys that go to this school. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I could be totally wrong. Like, if there's a second part of this video or more context that somebody else followed up on, like, oh. Like, Honestly, all the comments basically just are assuming that it's racist, but that's because they posted that specific clip and didn't post, like, any of this conversation. They didn't post, like, you know what the what the school came back and said or like what the history of that school is or even what like the population of the school is like is it a, a school that's predominantly like caucasian is he going to a private school like there's there's so no context details. there's no context except for like it's automatically racist on because talk show. somebody said something to a black kid about their hair right I, I think i need more context good one though yeah yeah interesting we'll have to keep I'll have to look, we'll have to follow that one. Do some see. research and like see. see like what school he goes to and like if anyone else said anything about that. Cause yeah. I may have to, I may have to look at the article because it was on CBS Mornings. Mm. Um that was the student in Texas. Yeah, CBS Mornings is the Instagram. Um I'm pretty sure that's a channel, like the news channel or news show. So if you guys are interested, to look it up. Yeah. I'll we'll um, put the link to the TikTok in the description. Okay. And the next one, I don't remember if this is what this is called. Okay, so this is, some of, some of you guys may have heard this already. It's Tyler Perry talking about relationships and specifically black men and black women and their relationships. A lot of women, especially black women, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In our society right now, black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men. Right. There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you if you can find love 
if that man works, you know, at whatever job mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors what and does what he can mm -hmm. because his his gift may not be your gift. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And as long as he's secure in himself to know that Yep, she makes most of the money. All I can pay is the light bill. As long as she's comfortable enough to say, I'm going to cover the mortgage and all the other stuff, you can have the light bill, baby. You can take me to dinner every now and then. Mm -hmm. That is fine. Yeah. It's an, a, a lot. So, I've heard you've got a different point of view on it since we, since I've played it for you. You've had a few, heard a few takes? Yeah. Okay. So, of course, the boys talked about it on their podcast. Okay, well, say your take first. And then we'll go to other people's takes. Okay, so my my initial reaction to hearing it is I understand the mindset of women in general, not just like in black love relationships. Women in general being okay with partners that don't necessarily, especially if you're like really up there, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever. Um, that you'd be okay with somebody that maybe like works like a regular job. Right. I don't think that that is the same as the extreme that he took it to in his example. And maybe he wasn't trying to reach that far. I, I feel like there's a difference between you making $120,000 a year because you're a freaking like lawyer or doctor or something and your partner like is a teacher is a teacher and makes, makes 55. 55. Yeah. That's different to me. Yeah. Then you dating somebody who all they can contribute to the household is paying the freaking light bill and loving you. Dogs love people. Yeah. <laughs> My son unconditionally loves me. Yeah. I have no desire to care for him and take care of him for the rest of his life. Yeah. He has to eventually grow up and be able to take care of himself. If this grown man can't even pay a light bill, then he's not taking care of himself. Yeah. So the I I I heard there's like a longer clip. So when you start piecing together more of what he said, it sounds less like women need to settle and more like embrace, look, focus less on the money and more about how the person treats you because you can get, you can end up with a super rich, super selfish, narcissistic jerk yeah, and overlook somebody who would be great for you um, because they like don't make, don't match the income level that you make. Yeah. Um, I think that as a yes, most women want their partner to make more than them. But I think if you're career focused and you like your job, then they could just match your income. Right. And you have a dual income is great. Thirty thousand two house two people making sixty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars a year, so it's a hundred thousand dollar household. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that's solid for any household. So yeah. like I the I, but then, so that was my initial, that was like, when I sat on it, that was my, that was my thought. The take that got me to his video, his video, she was saying that black women should be upset because Tyler Perry said that black women should just settle. If they want to be with a black man, they have to settle um, with scrubs, basically, because apparently because Black men making less than black women doesn't make them scrubs. Yeah. Necessarily, right? Like, that is a jump, an assumption. Because we're comparing, like, black women being highly successful, which is fantastic. Um, now, do we do I think that black men need to, like, come up, come up and elevate? Yes. But they're, okay, so I feel like, because when I first heard this, immediately I was like, hot and it really didn't have to do with what he was saying specifically about black men and women it had to do with what he was saying about women like you said in general saying like if your man doesn't doesn't make that much money it's, it's totally fine you can just as long as he loves you as long as he loves you and newsflash people uh love does not make relationships last 30 40 years People get divorced over money. They divorce people over money that they love. Because at the, so this is the thing. At the end of the day, 
It's not all about money, 100% not. But relationships aren't all about anything. They're not all about love. They're not all about money. They are a combination of a lot of different aspects that have to work well together. And not all the time is everything going to be firing. In my opinion, if you're married and you already accept that this man isn't going to make as much money as you, then you signed up for that. Right. You're in it. You can't complain now. Right? Unless he came under, you know, certain, he said, like, when you first met that you, you know, his plan was to blah, 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 blah. Right? But if you marry a teacher and he said, yeah, I've been a teacher for five years. I plan to be a teacher. I don't have any desire to be a principal or be a, be work in administration or anything like that. I want to be around the kids. That's what I want to make. Right. I'm going to make $50,000. It might go up five, ten thousand $10,000 in my whole career. You know what I mean? But I'm happy with that. Right. And she's like, okay, cool. Well, I'm a doctor. I will start my career making twice as much as you and also be in twice as much debt. But that's a whole nother separate conversation. Right. Um, but she and was way more stressed and like crazy hours. hours. Are awful yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So it's like, so again, if he, this, that's a perfect, that is a perfect example because if you sign up with somebody, you marry somebody who is in medical school, right. And you're thinking, oh, I can be with them because they have more, you know, they, they have There's less time, but more time in medical school. Right. Right. But then they go into residency and then they become a doctor and then they have like, they're the, the new doctor. So they get the worst shifts and the worst hours and all that stuff. You never see them. They're always exhausted. They're sleeping while you're at home taking care of whatever you're going to be taking care of. And they're, they're gone at work while you're sleeping. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. Right. You could think, man. I did not sign up for somebody who doesn't have time for me. Well, you kind of did. You signed up to be with somebody who's a doctor. Right. Right. So it's like, I don't know. Anyways, I think that if you're married and you sign up and somebody doesn't, isn't making a lot of as much money as you and you elevate and they don't elevate with you, I feel like you need to kind of like figure out why are they not elevating because they were already happy where they're at. Like if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're in your 20s, chances are that person is not going to stay there where they're at in their career right. at 20, 21, 22, 23. But at 30, 34, 5, 6, 7, 40, that person's in their career. Yeah. You know, they're not trying to go come up, right? They're there, especially men. And they hit their, the peak of their career between 35 and 40. They're there. They're in it. They're probably making the most money they're going to make in their life at that age, right? So like, if you're signing up for somebody that's that age and they're making under what you think is necessary or they can't take care of themselves at all, but you have money and you're like, but he's so nice. No, that's bad advice. Women take that advice and then they end up taking care of somebody who's a bum. Because like, but he just loves me. Okay, but he sits all day home and plays Xbox. Get a dog. Exactly. Get don't get up. Don't get a man. Get a dog. They will love you. <clears throat> like, and like, I don't know. I just didn't like the way that it, there's too many women who are trying to, who pick men and they try to fix them and they try to create the man that they want by, and putting this advice out there is just like reinvigorating these women to say, Oh, I can find a project and I can fix him and I can elevate him. I can change his clothes. I can, I can make him driven and this and that. I don't, men have to have that, they have to have that themselves. Like at a certain point, like we as women, like we can help, like we can definitely um, inhibit that process, but we can, we, and we can, we also can help that process. But at the end of the day, if you have a man who has no drive whatsoever, you're not help. you're not going to help. Right. So I don't know. It just really bugged me. I didn't like, I just didn't like the delivery because it obviously is getting, going to get taken out of context, right? Based on right. the whole broad picture of the context of what he's saying, which from what you said sounds like he was just saying like, Hey, maybe, women, Hey, stop, stop focusing so much on finding a provider and find a person that like, like cares about you. Yeah. And he also emphasized a lot when I was listening to it again, was he was emphasizing what level of comfortability you guys, you have together. Mm hmm if it is okay with you that he contributes this that amount or whatever and he's great and he's this and he's got all these other qualities then like if you're okay being the breadwinner and he takes care of the kids like uh, like he's like that's okay 
but I don't, I think when he, when you focus it on, focus it on one specific ethnicity that's and and black men specifically that are already kind of like just in general have to work a hundred times as hard to do anything. Yeah. And then now you add in it like, well, black women are cir- running, cir- you know why black women run circles around black men is because a lot of times they don't up- bring up the black men in their life. So they go and they like, again, date a lot of Caucasian men and all other ethnicities in my life. So it's, it's I'm saying this because it's true. Black, black women, some of the most successful black women are not with black men. Mm-mm. Now, the Obamas are an exception. There are exceptions to this. But yeah, LeBron James. LeBron James. But they they but it <clears throat> but but it wasn't her. It was him. He brought her with him. Yes. Same with Michelle, even though she had a flourishing career, but still. Well, like, no, she had to wait. She Alabama's backed up career. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. She had yeah. to wait out his career. They were both in school. They were both in college together. Um so there are there are exceptions. I can't but, think of one example of a woman who was rich and brought a man with her like who was like smart or whatever or something and brought her i feel like men don't seek that out though men aren't going to seek out the most smart the smartest most driven most no serious and like we, we I've, we've heard this so many times like freaking uh pretty woman now it doesn't have to be a hooker but that mindset is a hundred percent true yeah Men will literally, I heard a second date update that this man was pissed because this waitress, he was an ass, but he had a lot of money. So he felt like, he's like, well, you should be grateful because you're a waitress and like, I even deigned to take you out. Yeah. I deigned to take you out, but it's because that's an extreme, but like men care more. They would rather date the woman that has the time for them. Yeah. That has like, is sweet. That is sweet and caring and attentive and pays attention to them. They could give a F less about whether or not she has, she, you know, was, I don't know, the valedictorian and, you know, was what, like, they don't care about that. She's yeah. a doctor and she's got 12 letters on the end of her name. Like, they don't care about any of that. Yeah. So. Okay. So I was going to read a uh, freaking Emma the Asshole, but I'm going to tell this instead because it's so relevant to what we're talking about right now. Like, okay. literally so relevant. <laughs> so, um, and then we'll probably be done, close to being done after I tell you this. So. Ramit Sethi, you guys don't know who he is. He has a whole, he has a show oh, on Netflix. Yes, he has a show on Netflix about finances um, called, he also has a podcast. And a podcast. I was listening to his podcast. This is where I'm going. What's the show called? Uh, My Rich Life. Um, And he has a book and a journal and a podcast. So I've been listening to his I podcast. introduced Ashley and she is now obsessed with this man more than me. Yes. I let her, I literally said after to Ashley, you got to watch the show. You're going to love the show. By the time it. she finished watching it, she had bought two of his books. Yeah. So books, to his podcast, podcast, oh, yeah. yeah. I love it. It's just so, <laughs> because, so this is the thing I love about the podcast because I went on there to learn about finances, but what I learned is about the relationship dynamic. He specifically felt, cause he didn't really give advice on there. Right. Cause he's like my, the, my advice in my book. The reason I bring people, he brings people on here is because he mediates their conversations about money, which, ooh, which is so God. Bl- and they're not freaking, uh, anonymous these are people who just put their he calls out their finances this they have zero in savings zero in this blah 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 blah, blah. they make thirty thousand dollars together whatever it is like he calls it out right so this particular episode i was listening to ended up being a two-part episode and when i finished the second part of the episode i felt no warm feelings towards the husband whatsoever and he ramit really tried in those two episodes to make you feel warm (laughs) But he didn't like, you could tell he didn't like him either because Remy doesn't hold back, right? So basically the issue was they're from Los Angeles, okay? When she met him, she was making way more money than him. Okay. And, but she was cool with that because she had like gotten some type of like dating service or whatever to match her with a man, but she didn't specify on there. Like he doesn't have to make the same amount of money as me. He just has to have drive, right? Potential. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's what she said to me. I was like, oh, I know where this is going. So they get married. They've been together for 13 years. Wow. They've only been married for three of those years. She met this man. They matched him. She met, they matched her with this man that 13 years ago. Yeah. So basically, long story short, they, um, in COVID, during COVID, had kids, got married. Okay. 
they right before that though in 20 like a couple years before they had sold all their stuff and they had started traveling the world 2019 Ooh, the world shut down so then the world shuts down so they have nothing get away. no property in the states to come home to nothing so they end up basically like low-key homeless for a minute and then like her dad gets cancer during covid so she's flying back and forth to see her dad like all this stuff so they are hemorrhaging through money right she still has a business that's making a lot of money. Her business makes like six figures, something like that. Her business is making, is really, really profitable, right? But then they have two kids. What's he doing? He does something else. He does something like sales, but it's not a consistent income. It's very similar to what Derek does. It seems like, they didn't specifically say it, it's solar, but it's like every month is going to be like, you have to close so many deals to make right. money. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's very similar to that. But hers is kind of set because she's had this solar sheet business for four, three, four years now, or something like that. So it is profitable going but she has to pull back now because she's got kids she has a four-week-old when they recorded the podcast right and a four-week-old and a like three-year-old something like that they got mm -hmm. tiny tiny kids so she's home okay and she's still working because she's an entrepreneur but she still can't put like the full force so husband steps up previous month he made seventeen thousand dollars one month in sales and she was like great Literally, it was just like, cool, good job. Hopefully, you make you that much next month. I feel her energy because I have that energy sometimes. I don't mean to, but I have that energy sometimes. Because when you have a partner that doesn't make consistent, like doesn't have a paycheck, like you know it's going to be $1,364.72 every week, it's hard to like, it's like, cool, great. I immediately break down all the money and disperse it. Woman it's math. gone. Woman math. Is that a thing, woman math? You've never you've heard about woman math? So I watched the TikTok about woman time. Oh, no. Mom there's, time. There's woman math. Okay. You could tell about that in a second. But I <laughs> think I know what it is. But, like, literally, as soon as I hear that money, I'm like, it, it's gone already. Right? It doesn't matter how much it is. It's gone. <clears throat> so, anyway. So, basically, she, at one point, Pours her heart out to the man and says, listen, I just need you to engage. She's like, because she knows she's having, the kids are going to be here. The second one's going to be born. So she like really tightened up on the finances, tightened up on the budget and all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's like, I just need you to make sure you, when you spend, you spend out of this account because I'm trying to really, really track the money in our joint account to figure out exactly what our spending is so I can set a budget that's accurate, this and that. And then he goes and he spends like $15 out of the joint account and then transfers money over. And she's like, what you don't understand is when you do that, you mess up like the way that it gets put in the system. And then I have to go in and recode things and move them. Back. Like you have to reassign them. He doesn't. So he doesn't understand accounting. He, he yeah. I know. I understand. Nor does he care. You can't just move money. Yeah. So he, he was like, I'll just transfer. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's going to be, the number's going to be the same. Right. And she's just like, no, it's not how it works, but whatever. Okay. You still don't have the money. You still lost $15. You just moved it. Just move the deficit to somewhere else. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, that's, yes, that's true. So she was just like, well, because they were supposed to spend it out of, she just said, please stop doing that because it's messing up my ability to track our finances. Regardless, we have the funds. Just stop doing that. Just bring your joint account card and use it. <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. So she's like, it's not that hard, you know, like asking one thing. So um, it literally ends up being like, the podcast altogether was like it was two two-hour episodes back to back so it's a long 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 podcast um <clears throat> but he says she's pouring her heart out in the last episode in the last episode she's pouring her heart out like listen i really just feel like i've lost who i am i have two kids i had a full-fledged career before like a lot of life before i was making a lot more money and like i just don't feel comfortable just like handing over the reins to you to run the finances and it's mostly because she's like, it's mostly because of me, because like, I'm not feeling like settled in myself and like this new, like mother, mom versus an entrepreneur versus like wife versus, you know what I mean? Like, she's like, I'm not just, I'm just not like really I settled in myself. It. Yeah. His response is, um, it's really emasculating when you say stuff like that. To me. That was his response. Not like, I'm sorry that you are like overwhelmed and what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. What did Ramit cut him off three times because he kept starting over and saying the same thing. Ramit's like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What do you think she said? Because did we not hear the same thing 
And he goes, no, 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 I heard her. She said that she's feeling overwhelmed. And like, I noticed that. I just didn't say it to her because I didn't want to upset her. But and he was like, okay. But she's like, but yeah, she's not feeling like herself. And Rachel goes, okay, I'll let you continue because it sounds like you heard her. <laughs> but he still continues on to say this, all this stuff about him, about her emasculating him and stuff. And then he goes on at the end of the episode to tell her that all I need from you right now so that I can be as profitable as I can be is for you to make me lunch and kiss my neck became a metaphor. You know what you can do? <laughs> Twin, I was literally, I was trying to hear him because I, I feel like a lot of times when men talk to women about what they need from them, it comes off, can come off like, woe is me, like whiny. And I try not to just like, I know for me, like I try not to just like, Pounce on it, like stop complaining, because that's how her energy was. Just like stop, I, you want me to make you a sandwich so you can make us money, so we can support our household. I no, like what? Why can't I, what? And also, in her situation, her business is way more profitable than his. So she's got stuff going on. You make me a sandwich, <laughs> right? How about you make me? Ugh. Anyway. So I was literally just like, but that was like the most, that episode was hard for me to listen to because I was just listening to this man and I was just like, and I'm trying to be, and she was trying to, to just be like, okay, empathetic, understanding, hear him. But I feel like even, I want to know what Ramit, I would li like to listen to Ramit say, because he did give some notes at the end, but I would want to know what he said once he turned off the recording. Yeah. Because I feel like he would would have been like, is he freaking serious <laughs> he's not serious right now like he, he said at one point y'all are arguing about stuff that's so stupid you're drowning you have no savings you have two kids you're one month away from not being able to pay your mortgage you have no investments and you're telling her that the only the one thing that will fix it and you'll be able to make money is if she just makes you lunch pats you on the back I don't understand where that, like, why it is that, like, there's men that are married that, how did you get through, how do you get through life if you constantly need somebody patting your ass every time you do something good? Yeah. Like, you need constant validation and constant encouragement to accomplish basic stuff. Yeah. Like, Words of affirmation is something that's super important to me. And <clears throat> while I appreciate that, you, I, you come to a point, especially like in my job, for example, where I'm not, I don't, <clears throat> I don't hear it from the direct people, like my direct supervisors all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I literally just started going, when I do something, like instead of like feeling like this out, like I, you feel this outward need for, to be like, to tell somebody, oh my God, look what I did. I'm just like, I just go, I just tell myself in my head. So that was awesome. Good job. Mm -hmm. And you weren't sure you were going to be able to get that done. Like high I five just, to yourself. I literally, I just high, high five myself in my brain. And I learned to appreciate my encouragement, like, and my successes and my wins just because I did them. Yeah. Not because I need somebody else to tell me. Now, yeah, is it nice when, like, I, like. Of course. <clears throat> it's always nice. Like, but when you work on something, you don't even realize it's something that you're working on, like randomly like so I this earlier that um I've been I I've really gotten into like make I love makeup and I wasn't really like allowed quote unquote to really like beat my face out when I was in my relationship and mm -hmm. so recently I've just come to really enjoy like doing my makeup and so I've been like watching all these videos but anyways I changed up the way of like doing my foundation and someone noticed that I worked today and I was like oh that's so nice didn't think anybody was going to ever notice like I obviously noticed I think it looks better but like you don't think somebody's going to notice that somebody notices those small things that you do because I was doing it for myself. And like, I liked it. She didn't, she, no one could, she didn't have to tell me that it looked nice. Like it, I like it. I thought it looked great. Yeah. And the same with the way I dress. Like if somebody could tell me that they think the way I dress is loud and super too pers too full of too much personality or whatever, like I don't care. Yeah. So I don't understand that. I don't understand losing that when you get a partner that you lose the ability to like push yourself and encourage yourself. Like I, you don't need a pat on the butt for doing basic life. Things. Yeah. 
And I like, I sort of feel like sometimes for me with Phoenix, I feel like the only time he notices something is if it's not done. Derek doesn't do this, but Phoenix does this. So like if I don't pack his lunch, if he, like I forget by chance, like I get busy at night doing Griffin's bedtime routine, doing, doing laundry, all the stuff I do at night. And I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to do his, pack his lunch, whatever. So then in the morning, and I know Derek has stopped him from doing this, but Phoenix's tendency is to be like, mom, you didn't pack my lunch. Right? So that it's my fault. Or like, my jersey, it's not clean for, I wanted to wear it five days in a row and you didn't wash it. Or like, um, Landon, mom, I wanted some chocolate bar snack and there's not any in there. Okay. Landon does that. Like, he'll be like, mom, you parked so far. Why didn't you park closer? Yeah. And I'm like, and I told him, and I started telling him like, Landon, I try to park as close as possible. So now when we go outside. If he sees that the car is closed, he's like, mom, you were able to park close. I know you try really hard to park close. <laughs> so like, that's like a stupid example compared to lunch. But like, it's like those little things, but like, I think the jerk reaction when you're so used to something being seamlessly done all the time and you not having to yes. take the effort to do them yourself. It's like, um, and that's what, what Derek made him wash. Well, Derek, Derek made him wash his jersey this morning. We were just talking the other day. What were we just talking about with Derek about, um, like, that guy that you were telling the was it who was reading Emily Asshole? He was just like he would just think get some magic husband. fairies. Yeah, yes. I was like, magic fairies come. Do <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, that's just like really quick. This it was just like this this guy and his wife and they had kids and he lost his job and she was going to work. She went back to work after being a stay at home mom for a super long time and he. Uh, loses his job and for two years this man sat on his butt and like did not do anything couldn't remember to take the kids to school couldn't remember to make their food and his uh sister tore and his mom tore in his ass because he was not <laughs> doing anything yeah and like yeah i just don't like like people i genuinely think women sometimes we do such a great job at our job that the people in our life become so dependent on things just running so smoothly and we take so much pride and, and, it running smoothly. and it running smoothly that sometimes every once in a while I just want to like <laughs> <laughs> the straw is on the floor yeah like you know well, every once literally, literally do that. this is this morning okay I come downstairs and Phoenix makes his liquid IV every morning for school right couldn't find it this morning there wasn't me there was some oh okay but he every morning opens the pack and if y'all don't know what liquid IV is it's literally like a little like powder packet of like electrolytes you pour it in your water and you drink it whatever they have a kids version and they have a kids version so I bought Phoenix his con candy flavored ones because con candy is his favorite flavor of everything right now ice cream freaking everything yeah so I found con candy he loves it it's awesome great win for me okay but what he does every time he opens it spills half of the powder on the counter and leaves the wrapper leaves the wrapper and the door open on the counter and leaves the door open every time. <laughs> and every time I come downstairs, I put it in the trash, I wipe the freaking powder off, and then I just go about the day. Right? So I went to do that this morning, and Derek happened to be near me. And I was like, I just casually said, Hey, Phoenix, like, can you not leave the liquid IV packets on the counter? He goes, Yeah, mom. And then I put it in the trash. I go to put it in the trash. Derek literally hits it out of my hand. <laughs> He's like, What are you doing? I'm like, I'm just putting it in the trash. Why? I'm like, Well, because he left it on the floor, and I, I didn't, I just wanted to put it in the trash. And he was like, no, put it back on the floor. And I was like, well, I'm not going to put it on the floor because then more powder is going to spill. There's going to be a bigger mess. And he was like, just set it down. And then he was like, Phoenix, get over here right now. What are you doing? You leave this every morning for your mom to clean up. This is ridiculous. Put it in the trash. The trash can's right here. Well, now I got two out of three because I do the same thing to Phoenix. You're the only one that doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> literally, you are the only one because I literally, I do that. I'm like, Phoenix. Close the cabinet. Wipe down the counter. Put the put the bread back in the cabinet, Phoenix. Did you close the pan? Did you close the pantry, Phoenix? Why are your socks on the floor? Can you grab your like? And there's two of them because Landon's not like super at like. I just want me let Landon go rummage through the kitchen as much as Phoenix is. He's just like he's not really like, he can, but not really. Yeah. Um. But like even Landon, like Landon, throw your plate away. Put your fork in the dishwasher. Landon, close the dishwasher. Landon, like I, 
so I try to do that with Phoenix, but yeah, you have a habit of just cleaning up after everyone. Yeah. And I know it seems like more, the thing it's is, more it's more, to it's more effort you. to ask you and then have to argue with you back and forth and watch the sigh and the foot stomp and the blah, blah, blah. And explain to you how to clean it. That's another thing. Too. No, but he has to learn. Phoenix is eight. Almost. Whatever. Very he's, his birthday's in January. Yeah. So he, he just, yes. There are plenty of chores that he can do. He does. I added, I slowly added chores. He's been walking sans every day after school okay. and not complaining. He doesn't let her poop because he doesn't want to pick up the poop, but he lets her pee. So that's something. He cleans up his room every day, except he didn't clean up today. So I made him clean up pretty much bed. He cleans up every day. He's not allowed to have his tablet before that. Um, I mean, we have him in all these sports. Uh, that's not chores. He, well, the he feeds the again. animals. Okay. He's big enough to vacuum or load the dishwasher and load the dishwasher. Derek said he doesn't want to load the dishwasher because there's sharp stuff and he doesn't want to hurt himself. Which I feel like is fair. How many times do you stick your hand in a sink? Especially mom used to soap things. You stick your hand in there and you get your hand sliced open by something that broke. Did you know that apparently that's like a black people thing, soaking dishes? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a TikTok and I was like, that's a black, like, that's a black people? That's specific to black people that be soaking the dishes? Or people not? that don't have dishwashers, but yeah. Right, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I thought it was just because they didn't have a dishwasher, not because it's black people. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, 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 I feel like you don't have to soak things now because technology, like, there's so many soaps and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we were going that dishwashers stuff. did not do No, it. they did not hit right. No. no. Even our dishwasher here, everything else is falling apart. Literally, the cabinets are falling off. If you knew how much we paid for this place and the fact that the cabinets are falling off. <laughs> wow. Um, we pay some people's mortgage for three houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the freaking, the dishwasher does do a good job. The dishwasher and the washing machine do great. The disposal... The, the freaking circuit. You and I pop. learned some good solid skills that we now know how to reset a disposal. Oh, Derek had to take home, take take apart the entire disposal because something had gotten stuck in there and they don't come on the weekends. So the sink was filling up with nasty stuff. So Derek literally got underneath the sink. We watched a YouTube video and I told him I was going to do it because I know when I say that, that motivates me to do things. Because I was like, I'm about to get under the sink because it had been two days. I'm like, I can't clean anything it's disgusting well, he put the gate he put the gate up when you and i are like i guess we're gonna do it we'll do it on saturday we'll put it together and derek's like he i did buy a simpler one though this one has like four screws jupe jupe that's it <laughs> it would still be up if phoenix hadn't broken it out of the wall twice anyways anything else Lynn? no good talk Lynn. yeah good talk i think that was a good podcast i don't even know if it had any sense of direction whatsoever it did did it okay. yeah we i feel talking, like we like tangented it a we're lot we're talking about like finances and relationships yeah well, also, and then, like, about the hair. But that's, that was weird. Yeah. So, okay. So, we're going to link the two episodes from Ramit Sethi's podcast. Like, just go. I just love um, stuff like that. Like, it's, like, psychology type stuff, relationship stuff. It's great. Um, so, we'll link that. We'll link the videos that we use. The two we, TikToks. The two I, TikToks and all that stuff. Right. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys for watching or listening, whatever you're doing. Please, like. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, follow, and share, share, hit the bell, all that stuff. Wherever it's really platform easy you're watching, to share. Like when you see the post come up on the story, just, just hit the little arrow. Just share it. Very that easy. Is. Instagram makes it so easy now. It's like two clicks. Yeah. Just share it. Um, let other people know that you like listening to our podcast. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Right. That's it. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Done, son. 58 minutes. We need a still.